Hey folks, Jim Thomas here, fitness management and consulting, and welcome to our channel today. I appreciate y'all being here. And if you're new to the channel, if you're finding us for that very first time, you know, welcome as well. And as a quick reminder to all, you know, my focus, you know, my mission here on the channel is I want to be able to provide as much information as I can to as many people as I can across all regions. And uh, the best way I can do that, the best way I can get that kind of reach is when you choose to subscribe to the channel, when you choose to like the videos, and when you choose to share the information with friends, colleagues, and associates. And so if you've not yet done so, you know, please subscribe, please hit that like button, and please share the information. And then for additional ways that you can support the channel, you can check out the links below. Uh, for additional ways where I can help you take your business to that next level, also check out those links below for that additional information. And with that said, let's get into our topic here today. And it's nine ways to encourage others in gym sales. It's nine ways to encourage others in gym sales. Okay. And what we're trying to do, you know, if we're in management, you know, the way I like to describe management is we want to create an atmosphere that allows a motivated person to act. That's what we're trying to do. We want to create an atmosphere that uh, allows a motivated person to act. And so the encouragement, the more we encourage, you know, you'll be surprised, you know, how people will start to come around. You know, we're trying to be a resource center to them. Okay. In many ways, really, we're trying to take the stress out of this thing. I don't, I, don't, I don't want them to feel stress. I don't want them to feel pressure. We might have high expectations, but once we're rolling, you know, right now, if, we're, if we need encouragement, that may not be necessarily the time for some of that. So nine ways to encourage others. So if you're uh, an associate, a peer, uh, if you're the boss, take a look at this. How can we help these folks? And so number one, encourage in private. Encourage, encourage them, encourage them in private. You know, one on one, you know, let them know you believe in them. You know, catch them doing something right. Okay, don't just keep catching them doing something wrong, catch them doing something right. Look for the good, but encourage them in private. Number two, agree with their feelings. You know, we talk about this in sales all the time. One of the more powerful tools in selling is agreement. Mary, I understand. I'd feel the same way if I was in your shoes. You know, you're talking to a salesperson and, uh, and they're talking about how they, they just felt anxiety or they felt this and they felt that. And you know what, Mary, I understand. I mean, I felt exactly the same way. And, and honestly, you know, I, I've always felt that one of my strengths in, in sales training, okay, uh, is because I've been at both ends. I was absolutely horrible at this, okay, and I needed that encouragement. And then I became very good at it to the point that I ended up owning a lot of clubs. And so I know both sides of it. It wasn't like I just stepped into it and did a good job. I didn't. And I do know those feelings. Okay. And uh, so agree with their feelings. Mary, Mary, I understand. I understand exactly what you're saying. Let me tell you what, I remember one time when I was doing this and what happened to me, agree with them. It draws people in. Number three, break down obstacles and challenges into small bite sized pieces. You know, what do we always call it in, in selling? You know, you want to reduce it to the ridiculous. Hey, it's $30 a month. Why well, it's a dollar a day. It changes how you look at it, right? Do the same thing here. You know, if we're struggling with this, break it down into obstacles and challenges. Okay. Yeah, I remember when, this is when I first got promoted to a uh, manager. And uh, one of the challenges that I had, it's kind of a good kind of a challenge. It wasn't really a, a bad thing. But, you know, I was making about 100 sales a month as a salesperson. And for me to go to manager, managers really were not selling in that environment. And it's like I just lost 100 sales, you know, out of this club's production. Who's going to be able to do that? And so the challenge, and so I was going to have someone kind of just kind of do tours for me. And there was a girl who worked there who'd been in sales, and she really struggled. Everybody liked her, but she just wasn't very good in sales, didn't really grasp it. And so, okay, I'm going to have her do all my tours. And I broke this down into simplest, you know, simplest that I could do. I said, here's what I want you to do. Find out what their goals are on this tour and why they're important. And then find out how long they've been thinking about it. That's all I want you to do. You can do whatever else you want to on this tour. 
Okay, those are the only two things I care about. And so when you come back up and you introduce them to me, hey Jim, this is Mary. Mary's been thinking about losing 20 pounds since she got out of college. It's been about 10 years now. And, uh, you know, she's, uh, you know, ready to get ready to get some results. And so I take her and sit down and hopefully get them signed up. But break down your obstacles and challenges into bite-sized pieces. Reduce it to the ridiculous. Because when you start reducing it like that, so this big old thing, it's little bitty things. Because the truth is, it's little bitty things that make the difference. Number four, use questions. Use questions. You know, don't tell them. Ask them. Okay? You know, what were you thinking here? How did this feel? When did you feel best? What worked well? What didn't? That's always my favorite. Hey, what? Let's look at it. Sign them up or you didn't. What worked well? What didn't? What did you feel good about? Where didn't you feel good? Where were you confident? Where where did you lack confidence? You know, ask questions. Okay. Um, number five on my list here, this one I think is a big one, is you want to remove kind of weights or responsibilities, whatever's weighing on them, whatever responsibilities, remove them, at least temporarily. Maybe take away that weight of having to make the sale. Hey, give it a shot, see what happens. Give it a shot, see what happens. Okay, it's one of the things I always liked about doing like that third party touch, you know, the takeover. You know, you never had anything to lose. That thing was already lost. <laughs> okay, you know, I'm just going to go in here and do my thing and ask them, and hey, you know, I have success half the time. Okay, but remove the the weight that they're feeling. Remove that responsibility, at least for now. Okay, maybe there used to be a number one in sales and they're feeling that weight. Hey, don't worry about it. I got you covered. Okay, I'll take care of it. Okay. I mean, I remember a day we were doing, you know, we were doing so well at the club and, and, uh, and I told everybody, I said, Hey, before anybody leaves, let's just make sure you introduce them to me. I want to make sure I talk to everybody today. Okay. Cause I, I was, I was trying to put that, 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 that weight back on me. I didn't want them to feel it. It's going to be, it's going to be on me. And all of a sudden they relaxed. Well, Hey, this is Jim's problem now. <laughs> okay. They relaxed, did their thing. They were great at it and, and they got them signed up. Uh, number six, now nine ways to encourage others in gym sales. You know, explain their value. Let people know their value. You know, these we're not defined by our ability to sign up new members. Okay, you know, we have other values here. Let them know what people's value are. I mean, there's people that I hired. I just like having them around because they always had a smile on their face. They saw the funny side of things. They kind of brought the room up. A lot of value there. Okay, you know, a lot of times they did it for the member base. A lot of times members loved them so much they were great for retention. Make sure people know their value. And their value has got nothing to do with, you know, maybe how they did today on, on membership sales. Okay, I know we want them. Okay, and we can find ways to get them. But that's not what their value is necessarily. Um, number seven, get on their level. Here's what I mean. Have empathy for them. Have empathy. You know, we talk about this all the time. Don't just wait for your turn to talk, but get on their level. Have empathy. You know, what stresses are they feeling? Maybe they're having to do this or afraid they're going to get fired or they're not going to be able to make the car payment or they need to buy food for the family or they need books for the kids. But understand. Be a resource center for them. Help them. Um, number eight, encourage rest. You know, what happens when we, when we get into that mode where, you know, we really need some help, there's a tendency to start worrying about this stuff. And we'll just kind of worry it right out the door. Okay? And you get proper rest. You, you're going to think a little bit better. Because what we want to be, be doing here is we're in the solutions business. I want to help my customer find a solution to their problem. I want to help my business with solutions. We're, we're focused on solutions. Identify what's wrong, but focus and give the power to the solution. But you're going to need rest in most cases in order to do that. Encourage rest. Don't go home and worry about it. It's like when you leave tonight, you know, Mary, I want you to go home. Don't forget about this place. Don't even think about it. Just know I support you 100%. I'm going to help you get through it. Okay. I remember one time we had a guy, he was a top guy, and he was going through a little bit of a slump and he got down kind of quick. And, you know, I wasn't really selling a bunch, but I had made a sale that day. And uh, I just walked up to him and said, hey, that sale I just made, I put your name on it. 
And that's all he needed to get his spark back. Okay. And then uh, number nine on my list of nine ways to encourage others in gym sales. Let them talk. Let them talk. It's not about you talking, really. Let them talk. How do they feel? What are they thinking? What's going on? Okay, you know, because, you know, when you need encouragement, that confidence, that self-esteem, because we need to feel good about ourselves. We need to feel good about ourselves. Let people talk. Let them know their voice is being heard. Let them know they have value. So, folks, my name is Jim Thomas. My company is Fitness Management and Consulting. Our topic today has been nine ways to encourage others in gym sales. Um, if you've not yet done so, you know, please hit that subscribe button. Help me, help me reach as many people as possible. You know, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and uh, you know, share the video with friends, associates, and colleagues. And for additional ways to support the channel, you know, check out those links below. And we'll look forward to seeing you all in that next video.